welcome to Old Time Tuesdays. I've got some modern stuff here, um, which is going to relate to something else in a minute. But these are all boots that are trying, you know, people are developing, they, they improve all the time. And it's to prevent shoeing a horse, putting an iron shoe on the foot. Now, if I didn't have to shoe, I wouldn't do it. Let me just say that I would go barefoot tomorrow if I could. I know one lady that didn't live far away from me and she drives and does a lot of miles um, with her all she's driving barefoot. She's got um, four or five that she drives barefoot and does the miles on the public highway, on the roads, and they cope perfectly well. The problem is it's a time, you know, it takes a time to get the foot accustomed to it and to harden enough to be used like that. So, you know, not to be shot at all. So these are all different boots, it's all different ones. This is about the latest one. Um, I quite like this one actually, because the, the, it's very, very, it fits tight onto the hoof. So you don't get that problem where it's that much bigger. Maybe, I'm not condemning any one of these, I'm just saying like this one here, maybe wider. So if you get horse behind can brush, you know, more so, because you're, you're going much wider than the hoof itself. But that aside, I just want to put them aside, but I just thought I'd get them out because they linked into so if we put these over here, I'd say that's one of the latest ones. That seems to work quite well. So I've got nothing against being barefoot. If I could do it, I would do it tomorrow. I've got nothing against these boots. Only as I say, they can be a little bit wide and therefore horse behind can brush um, and that type of thing. But obviously they'll develop over time and they'll get better and better until that's what we can use. But as a, just to repeat myself, over the period of time that horses are normally with me six weeks, in that period of time they build up slowly to a large mileage, you know, a, a big mileage, and they wouldn't do it. And they're working every day, whether it's across in the arena or wherever it is, but they'll be doing something every day. Well, that's not strictly true, because we always give horses two days off completely and still feed them, yeah? And then we put them back in harness, because that's more like they'll get fed at home, they might get used for a couple of three days, and you want to know they'll still do their job. But basic truth, they, they're driven every day here, and they do the mileage, they get up to, you know, in the teens of miles. So, this is what I wanted to show you, just out of interest. So, here we have one of these, but obviously a very old one. This is a lawn boot. Now, you all know the cylinder mower you used to push along years ago, you've seen them perhaps. And you still see gang mowers pulled behind a tractor, which would be, you know, going across parkland, you know, rugby pitches and stuff like that. And they're a cylinder that flies around and cuts and it's towed behind and the motive power, the wheels turn, which in turn turns the blade. So these are lawn boots. These were fitted to a horse to prevent them marking the lawn. So you, they're all different sizes they had. And these are very old and on the front here if i just wet that you can see it says um it's nearly worn out now but it gives the company name i've got four of these obviously well, i've got quite a few of them actually but that one i think you can read on there where it says lawn boot by a certain company lots of different companies made them we've deciphered this one and it's t greens and sons but i can't see a date and obviously the leather was moulded round, it's very soft here at the top, you know, rolled over and soft, so it doesn't hurt above the coronet, and um, lovely idea. But what I really wanted to tell you was, this particular boot wasn't used as a lawn boot, but it was, excuse me, just have a, what it was used for, was in an arsenal, a storage of gunpowder, bullets, cannons, stuff like that. And I was a little tiny lead, and I went with a, a fella who used to sell green meat, green meat being clover that would grow very tall, so about this tall. And they cut it with a scythe in the early hours of the morning. They tie it in bundles that big, quite a tightish bundle, so it looked like a miniature corn sheaf, like that. And then we put it on a trolley, we'd stack it on, 
and then we put a wet sack over the top great big wet sacks then another row then another row and this lad I used to go with was a little dot you know I was only tiny he'd go all around London and we used to go to um, can't think where it was now but it was household cavalry we'd go to all the breweries um, I believe a couple of the big shops still had all stem, you know, done sort of a certain amount of deliveries when I was a little lad. Um, like Fulton and Mason and people like that. So this would be 65 years ago, we're talking. And um, we used to go down to this arsenal. Now, unfortunately, I can't remember exactly where it was. But when you went into the arsenal to deliver this green meat, so the, the long a bit explain that, the, the clover grew this tall was tied round with a string that was my job tying it up and uh we'd stack it on a thing and i think it back then in them days it was like sixpence or threepence it might have been three pennies you know threepence which would be one and a half p now wouldn't it for what was it but we'd have a lot on there and of course the the pony that we used for it would have been a his other job would have been collecting scrap a rag and bone man well once a week in the right season, that's what we'd do, go around with a green meat. Sometimes twice a week um, we'd go around. But it was um, it was a rag and bone thing. So the horse thought it was lovely because he set off with a big load. And as the day went on, his load decreased, didn't he? So it was light as opposed to when he was collecting scrap. Because he collecting and loading on. So he'd come back as the day went on, the area of the load got through the pool. But uh, this is quite interesting getting back to this boot. So this was put on. Now, why ever would they put them on in an arsenal? So as you went to this place, it was a great big archway with big doors. You went into the archway and great big doors. And there was a little office there where the, uh, there was guards there, obviously soldiers with, you know, armed soldiers. And they would um, so tell you whether you could go in or not. You had to do your paperwork, who were you, etc. I don't know whatever they'd done. I was only a little dot sitting on the football. But always fascinated me what they were. And shelves running along inside this big archway. These shelves would run down either side and they'd be stacked up with these boots, all different sizes. And the idea is that when you went in there, obviously it's gunpowder, bullets, etc. So you didn't want to go in there with an iron shoe on the on the cobbles. For the, the possibility of a spark coming off the iron shoe against the granite cobbles and they did spark make no you know definitely when i worked up at uh, the brewery when the horses pulled away with a load on on them cobbles you'd see them spark yeah you know, their feet so it was just to you know cut the risk of an explosion out at an arsenal whether that was at all arsenal or not i have no idea but this is the interesting thing, yeah, they, so they put these on the altar, so now it can't spark. But obviously they would wear out very quickly if there was just leather. So if you look at the sole here, yeah? there's a series of nails running round, can you see? All the way round, yeah? There, and across here. And now copper. Well obviously copper won't spark. So it afforded a little grip for the horse to pull, a little grip. And the other thing that's so interesting, if we look at this one, for instance, I'll just get me another thing on. Um, if I just get me, uh, yeah, there we go. If I just get this out and show you, take this one here, for instance. They'd have all been, this is quite a new one's been put in. These have been worn flat, but that's quite a new one. Well, that's no different to a stud being put in a shoe, a tungsten stud, you know, a road nail, exactly the same. It's the same size, same everything, but copper. So therefore, no spark, eliminating the possibility of an explosion. So I just find it a bit amusing. Well, not amusing, but it's quite funny that we got this here, very modern, and this one here probably I don't know, there's no date on this. Often things were dated, you know, even if it wasn't army, all army stuff is dated, but um, I can't find one on here at all. But on one of the boots, it's not this one, but on one of the boots, it's got um, 
that, that you know the name of the company and the date of the company when it was founded so that would give you some idea but this is certainly certainly over 100 years old but that's what it was for so i don't know when the cylinder mower come out you know so as you pushed it along you've seen them they're all mowers now that fly around and fly mower type things but you've seen gang mowers work on a cricket pitch sometimes around the boundary um, anywhere like that where there's a lot of grass to cut parkland they would run a mower over it if they want it like a lawn and it'd have about six of these mowers towed behind a small tractor with funny enough which is you know quite amusing really it would have grass tires on the tractor so it wouldn't have the big lines going up a tractor tire like it doesn't have big pieces of rubber like that it would be pretty smooth with just small indentations in the tread you know just to give it a little bit of grip without marking the lawn so you know everything comes around nothing's new is it really so just showing you them again this one here particularly now, all copper these are worn flat and if we look inside here i don't know if you can see there but when we look inside you'll see that they made a hole through the sole of this boot and then pushed them through and then just knocked them over but these nails were made for this job they had to be in my opinion i don't know whether that's actually strictly true but i think they were because i can't see what other job they would have possibly uh, possibly had if he was talking about a rivet a copper rivet would have a big head on so it didn't get pulled through whatever he was trying to fix it to so i don't know i think these were purpose made for the job so there you go a long boot but this particular one come out of that arsenal and um, the fella who used to go and deliver the the um, the green meat, they called it, this clover, the fella that used to deliver it, I um, can't think of his surname now, but his name was Alfie, uh, that I used to go with as a nipper, he, uh, he took them all away. And I think they were, most of them were just thrown away. And I was looking at it, only a little dot, and he said, you can have, you know, take them home if you want to. But I think he probably had them just to set light to them and get all the copper rivets off, you know, these big copper rivets here and all this copper around the bottom. I should imagine that's why. But even the buckles are done the same. Yeah. So no chance of a spark. So there you go. Out of an old arsenal, 100 and odd years old now, definitely without any question. So hope you've enjoyed that. And we'll have a look next time. God bless.